Nobody in the history of mixed martial arts itself, Dream, Pride, 1FC, LFA, um, uh, Titan, Strike Force, uh, I can just go on, Ryzen. Nobody, not even one champion has defended the title maybe eight times as a, a, a male or female. And I just did 11, so this is a big fucking deal and it means a lot to me. What up, everybody, and welcome back to yet another Sound of Violence podcast. I am your host, Pulver, and I am here with my co-host, Chris Medaffer. What up, bro? No, uh, keeping busy. Been a productive week for me. There you go. Uh, That's what's up. I yeah. have had a, I guess, productive week. I've just been sleeping a shitload since it is sober October. And so since I'm not drinking, there's been a lot of napping. Yeah, I, I wish I could nap. Yeah. Well, luckily the weed really makes it hard not to, so... Well, that, that, that'll do it. Right? So, if you guys have not heard the show previously... Oh, actually, I should intro first what I'm drinking. Uh, since, again, Sober October, I am drinking Zion's Mango Guava. Or should you call it the Savage Zion's? I mean, it's always savage, whether I call it that or not. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Uh, fucking, this show is super powered by Zion's. And I am sipping on... Firestone Walker 805 Blonde. It's really good blonde. It's That's one of my beer. favorites. Uh, yeah, everything Firestone Walker does is really fucking good. Their Velvet Merlin, real good. Oh, yeah. Velvet Merkin, That's like, That's like that stout, right? The oatmeal stout? Yeah, oatmeal stout. Yeah. Super bomb. Uh, yeah, man. Yeah, they're real solid. Anyway, way off topic, but uh, if you guys have not heard the podcast previously, we go through and talk about all of the MMA podcasts we've been listening to recently. Uh, essentially, we let you know a podcast, an MMA podcast you should catch, one you should skip, one you can't miss, and then uh, we try to listen to a new MMA show every week, since there are a fucking billion of them, and no one has the goddamn time to do all of them, uh, so we try to get some new ones in when we can. Uh, but Chris, why don't you start us off with your uh, MMA show people should catch this week? Um, let's see. Well, considering I pretty much didn't write any notes like an asshole... Um, I liked Unfiltered. I'll say that's a good one. The I actually one with, just listened to that. The, I listened to one with Randy Brown and Nardu. Yeah. Something. Uh, no, yeah, I'll, I'll find the notes on it. Keep going. Um, yeah, Randy Brown seems like a really cool guy. Uh, he was born and raised for a little bit in his childhood in Jamaica. Nardi Debra. Nardu Debra. That's who it was, yeah. yeah. He's a really good jiu-jitsu guy. Uh, yep. Based out of Brooklyn? Somewhere, Somewhere in New York. Uh, but yeah, Randy Brown was talking about life in Jamaica growing up, um, talking about how basically he never had any toys or really had any food, and then once he moved to the United States with his family, they moved to New York, and he settled, I think he was in the Bronx. Uh, but, he also uh, mentioned that he grew up a block over from Uriah Hall, Yeah, that's which right. is super random, and a great point that Matt said, I believe it was Matt, not Jim, uh, talking about like, what the fuck do they put in the water over there? Because there is some goddamn killers coming out of that neighborhood. I know, yeah, that's such a great coincidence. And they both ended up in New York, too. And then both in the UFC. Yeah, pretty yeah. crazy. Um, yeah, I'm trying to remember what he was... He was talking about Mickey Gall a lot. Um, yes, which they trained just, together before and everything. Yeah, he was basically saying, you know, Mickey Gall hasn't really even faced a real professional yet. He's not going to be his first pro fight. Mm -hmm. I remember him saying that. Um, I think... Matt was nerding out to Randy talking about something. I don't know if it was video games or what. Because I remember coincidentally, like a day later, Randy Brown. I was going to mention Reddit. this, yeah. 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 Looking hey, for guys. some fucking yeah. squad action. Yeah, and I probably siege. should. I mean, I didn't do it, but I probably should have messaged him, but hey, dude, you clearly play Gears and no one does, so shit. Right? That shit's maybe hilarious. I should, maybe I should just revisit that thread and just find his gamer tag and just send him a message say, hey, big fan. Good luck at Madison Square Garden. Right? But, um, that what, fight's going to be wild. 
What else did you have from Randy? Uh, I think the only other stuff they talked about in the episodes, they talked a lot about 216 and uh, people Matt was super hyped on, like uh, Maria Barella, the Italian chick, who yep. fucking crushed uh, homegirl for Rhea. That shit was yeah, brutal. That was a rude awakening for her UFC debut. For real. Hey, y'all motherfuckers want to learn to wrestle? Go to ATT. God damn, that girl did not used to look like that when she fought. Uh, that was a crazy... I've seen a couple of her fights. She never looked like that before. It's pretty wild. Oh, yeah, huh? Yeah, that's right. That's when we did the pics. You're like... Because you're... I was high on for Rhea, yeah. Yeah, you're going based on what the Italian chick looked like before. So clearly, uh, she has the great fucking coaching staff. Turning yeah. her game around on a dime. Pretty wild, for sure. Uh, and then they talked about, it, like, they just started naming off big fights at 217. And they're both, uh, Matt Sarah and Randy Brown was super high on JJ striking. Saying, like, yeah. Yoanny and Jacek, man or woman, best, like, some of the best striking in MMA. Which, I mean, goddamn, yeah, she's a beast. She's just fucking girls up in the face on the regs. Yeah. Yeah, that, that reminds me of when they're talking about JJ, her, her performance against uh, Jessica Andrade. It's kind of almost like a mirror performance. Uh, she didn't get the finish uh, like Demetrius Johnson did against Ray Borg, but like those stats, like just the oh, round by yeah. round striking, the, the amount of strikes landed, you know, and thrown was just insane. Yeah, um, it was, it's fu- it's ridiculous. That The fucking stat counts on that fight are fucking crazy. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, overall it was a fun ep. Uh, why do you think people should catch it? Um, I, I, I don't know. I mean, like, well, I mean, I think it's a good catch for a lot of people because I haven't heard a lot of Randy Brown talk before. I think that's why I liked it. I just really liked what he had to say. Yeah, I remember, smart uh, dude. He actually reminds me a lot of your eye Hall. Like, super laid back and like just seems like a real nice guy. Yeah, Nar- pretty calm. Nardu uh, was talking about like some. <laughs> Nardu's of- funny. He's like a, some yeah. on some Edo Portal shit. Yeah, he was. I remember he was uh, talking about a specific style of BJJ that he trains. I forget. Oh, shit, I can't remember who it was. Oh, man, I feel really dumb now. I didn't. I should have written notes for this man. It's all good. But um. Yeah, Nardu was a character for sure, though. No, I liked his charisma and everything. What he was talking about, he always had something to say when they brought up the cards uh, and all the fights. Um, yeah, overall, it was a solid episode. Wish I could have been. Uh, smart enough to write down some more stuff. It's but. all good, dude. That was a uh, yeah. I I actually surprisingly liked that one a lot. I also skipped the next one with uh the oh dude I saw model a, kickboxer. I saw a name. And I, was like, I don't know who that is. I know the name, yeah. but I I it's like Mia something, right? It was like Mia Kang. Yeah, and I was like, I don't know who this is. So just Matt Matt and Jim get real like I don't know like we'll say they get very supportive. Uh, when they have female guests in, and it's it's rough to get Phoenix through. Phoenix Car- Carnival? Exactly. Fucking Phoenix Carnival. Uh, geez, that girl. Um, all right, so I guess I should get into my catch for this week, which was the MMA Depressed Us, Woodley vs. Thompson 2. Uh, if you guys don't know, MMA Depressed Us, hosted by Zane Simon and Connor Rebush and Evil Greg Jackson, Phil McKenzie. Uh, and they went back, and every time there isn't a big MMA card, which Ryzen doesn't count uh, for anyone, really, uh, they go back and they watch some really bad fights. Uh, and it's it's always pretty funny. This is one of the funnier ones I'd heard. No, they picked a... I, I mean, okay, that, that fight was bad. Two was way worse than the first one. The first one I thought was fucking great. The first one's it, good. It, it, was good. It was good in the beginning and good at the end, and they would... Wonder Boy was actually letting his hands go a little bit. The second one's rough. Yeah, I haven't no. rewatched it. It's uh, rough on, on both ends, and they're both both their styles are weird for yep. each other. So I, I totally get that. You know why they were just like, well, yeah. The phrase "no one tries anything" gets uttered a lot during the show during that fight. Um, let's see, but they did open. Oh, the first word that started the podcast was the word "cunt," which is always a good sign. <laughs> oh, right. Because it was like the last word in the sentence uh, uh, Zane Simon was saying. He said record. He he, it started it right as he said the wow. word cunt, and then they all died laughing about it. Uh, the first fight they watched was Jared Haman versus Rodney Wallace, which, holy shit, go look this up on Fight Pass. It is the craziest goddamn slot. Like, it's so sloppy. Just everyone gasses immediately, and it's just straight chaos the entire time. Uh, oh, they talk about how Jared Mann looks like an alter ego of Henry Hoof trying out a new terrible style in the UFC. So he looks a shitload like a weird Henry Hoof character. So just a lot of awkward moves. No, he just looks like Henry Hoof, like in the face. 
Like, he just looks like him, but he's but terrible. He's, but he's but he's probably like taller. Than he him. yeah, he's like if Stefan if Henry Hoof, uh, like was Stefan Struve, but like also a baby giraffe. Yikes! It's it's crazy. Uh, I believe so. Oh, like schoolyard swinging. Like it's no all way worse than that. Like every time he gets hit in the face, he wobbles like a baby giraffe, and he has zero defense at all ever. Well, now he I wanna, also you threw, said it's on five pat. Well, now I have to watch. Oh, it. we'll watch it on the break. Uh, oh, yeah. It's fucking crazy. He throws a, a right hand and a left hand and a right high kick, kind of all at the same time, and drops the guy with it. Yeah. It's the craziest. Yeah, you know, move I think of funny. a hot rod where he's like, uh, yeah, it's a super lot super punch. Like or some bullshit yeah. where it goes like that. Like, what the fuck? It's kind of like that. It's goddamn oh, no. ridiculous. Uh, oh, they describe the fight as uh, a, basically it's a bouncy house versus one of those giant inflatable waving guys at a car dealership. Is kind of what the striking in that fight looked like. Oh, wacky inflatable arm flailing man. Yeah, I, yeah. they're they're actually called Sky Guys. Sky Guys. Some, something I learned from this podcast and a fucking terrible but hilarious name. Uh, let's see. They also watch Murray Smith versus Babalu. Uh, which just gets them way off topic. They start making fun of the weird UFC logo of that era, which was like the bald guy who always looked like he was fucking the world. <laughs> Within the globe. Yeah, yeah it's, yeah, it's yeah. real weird. Um, oh, they talk about the family drama narrative they made for all the fights. Because uh, at, at first they said that the Henry Hoof one, God, I forget what it, I think the Henry Hoof one they said looked like it was a dude getting beat up by his stepdad. They had like a whole. They had, there was a lot of narrative going on from them during this shit. Really random, but fucking hilarious. Uh, they mentioned Babalu's really crazy thigh to calf ratio, and the dude has quite literally chicken legs because his thighs are huge, but his calves are super small, uh, which I never noticed before. But it's you can't unsee it. Uh, they also figure out that Papa Roach isn't the guy's name from Papa Roach. Like, that's not the guy's name. No one's called Papa Roach. <laughs> wait, wait, someone thought that was like the I thing thought that was a thing no, until yesterday. No, his name was yesterday. like Jacoby something. Yeah. Because I remember he had name. that shitty ass show on, um, Karen, you remember on MTV, uh, that show called Scarred? Or it's like shows dumbass motherfucker. Of course, you guys would both watch a TV show called Scarred. On yeah, he's like, welcome to Scarred. It's like, yeah, like five years ago, I busted yeah. my forehead open, got like twenty staples, and he's like, yeah, you're awesome. And it's this like, is do the, it again. What the fuck? Yeah, I, I that I sounds. Have good choices in television in high school. Yeah. Okay? that sounds absolutely terrible. Um, let's see. Oh, and then after that. Getting back on topic. Oh, they made fun of Tito commentating for, like, the two words they heard him say. Because they figured out at the end Tito was commentating the entire fight. They were real bummed out. Did he have, like, an anecdote about becoming a wolf in the woods or something? Or stopping his brain? I'm sure he said, yeah, I'm sure he said some super crazy person shit. Um, And they talk about the Woodley Wonderboy fight. And they appropriately get super depressed by the end of it. And everyone just gets kind of quiet and upset. Well, because, uh, like, if that knockdown did happen, I guess they would give Wonder Boy the win. I mean... Kind of. Nah. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it came down to that round, for yeah. sure. Because Tyron won two and three, easily. Um, and then Wonder Boy won one and four, pretty much. Uh, and then that, well, it was... If, but Tyron I mean, murdered him. Let's, let's be real. If there wasn't that knockdown, you probably should call it a draw, but they're not doing that two yeah, times. No, they, would, they, will, they will pay off enough commissioners to make sure that doesn't happen, for sure. Um, but yeah, overall, it's just a really good, funny podcast. Zane Simon, and uh, they all do a ton of tape study. They all, I mean, they all train fairly regularly. At least I know uh, Connor still spars and stuff all the time. Um, just a fun podcast where they know enough to really, really love when they see really, really bad striking or grappling. Um, and it's fucking amazing Chris I will show you that we'll talk about it coming back from the break that fucking fight yeah I'm, I'm looking for I'm eager for that it's that sounds fun chaos and I absolutely recommend you guys go uh, check that out um, but since we got through that why don't you get us into what podcast you think people should skip for this week okay. we should give a disclaimer Eugene S. Robinson style that uh, just because we are skipping saying to skip your podcast this week does not mean you should always skip this podcast but means you are putting out content that is not up to fucking par and wasting goddamn people's times so let's see um i wrote down i listen to mma hour but for some reason i have i'm being an amnesiac right now can't remember shit who was on mma hour again because there's a reason why i wanted to uh dj calls in max holloway ian mccall carlos condit frank yeager john alessio everlast darian caldwell tony ferguson 
Yeah, wow, okay, I didn't listen to anyone, I guess I planned on that. Uh, <laughs> okay, so I guess my skip would be Luke Thomas. Um, yeah, beca- I could see I mean, that. Only because he's on vacation and he's kind of just now getting back to covering everything. Yeah, and everybody's asking him questions from like three weeks ago. And yeah, shit like and he that. was kind of getting irritated. I mean, it was a solid episode of Raw, but it was just a lot of just him... Fuck. A lot of Connor talk. A lot it was of... just a lot of hypothetical shit. Like maybe will they bring a one sixty five in? He's like yeah. no. He's like oh wait. Well I guess. And then I don't know. It was just him getting up to getting got back up to speed with things. And um, yeah, and there was not, I agree with you. There wasn't anything. I think I had a couple I, notes on Luke Thomas. Yeah, show, but one thing he kept really talking about, out. and I agree one hundred percent, is the next fight for Connor just has to be Tony and no one else. Because if you have him fight Nate, it's like then what the fuck's the point of the interim belt? It yeah. has to mean something. Yeah. And Tony's clearly the best and most deserving lightweight in the world, considering he's on a fucking ten, ten wins in a row, right? Yeah, that's uh, nuts. Longest uh, streak yeah, ever. That's insane. Way. He, I mean, he's like the real uncrowned champ. I mean, in my eyes, but yeah, because he actually cleared out the division. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, and, and the one good point he brought about that is the fight. The how would their fight would go down? Yeah, of course. You know, the first round. Connor could put him away, you know, based on the fact that Tony just keeps his fucking head up all the time. True. Yeah, and he's got the timing and the speed, but uh, he does bring up another good point, saying, oh, there's, <laughs> it's definitely not going to go to distance. No, someone's getting finished. It's either Connor's knocking him out or Connor's getting submitted. Yeah, the, so. it, no way that shit goes to yeah. the, the distance because Connor gas is way too bad. He's talking about that. It's the guy with the best cardio on British UFC versus guy with not terrible cardio, but not good cardio. Yeah, yeah. a guy that's a front runner for sure. Uh, yeah, I I felt, felt pretty much the same way. It was it's a it was a live chat where a lot of the questions were just kind of mediocre, and again, Luke just catching up from being back. Uh, my skip for this week was the Three Amigos podcast. I actually really like this show a lot. I like everybody on it. They're all fucking hilarious. Uh, if you guys don't know, it's hosted by Crooklyn, uh, Steffi Haynes, uh, and then it's also hosted by Ian Kidd and Mookie Alexander. Um, The main reason I had it as a skip is they don't talk a lot of MMA. They briefly talk about DJ and whether they should set him up for a super fight. And then it's just a lot of really preachy talk about boxing and football and kneeling and like fucking shit that I don't know why they're talking about it. Yeah, you know what I look forward to this Sunday? Uh, I don't give a shit about the Dallas Cowboys, but I look forward to someone getting benched because Jerry Jones, the hypocrite that he is, Mm -hmm. last week he was on, like, or two weeks he was on national television. He fucking followed the cameraman and said, hey, point the camera at me so you you could see me kneeling and locking arms with my teammates. Then just this week he goes, by the way, if any of you players on my team decide to kneel, you're going to be benched. So I'm looking forward to one of the star players getting benched. It'll be pretty great. Yeah. Sounds about right. Yeah. Fucking ridiculous. Um, so the only other stuff they talked about, talked about their distrust to Dana when he says Diaz versus Connor isn't being discussed. Uh, Mookie also brings up that, uh, he, he actually Mookie's the only one giving Ferguson a chance against Connor because fucking Ian Kidd and Steffi are fucking homers for that dude. Uh, oh, and Steffi, <laughs> fucking Crooklyn, what, what is this opinion? So she says that Lee only got caught because he gassed. That's why Connor's gonna win. No. It's like, bro, have you not watched any of Connor's last three fights, Steffi? I know you have. You've no. talked about it on your show. The fuck? Uh, I get what she's saying, that Connor's gonna finish him earlier, but, jeez. Uh I like that show, but sometimes it gets kind of off the rails. And there just wasn't a ton of MMA talk since there's no card this weekend or anything. Um, But yeah, so that's my skip. Chris, why don't you tell us the show people who can't miss this week. For me, it was the episode of You're Welcome with Chael. Short episode. Really? I I totally missed it. 45 minutes long, but he has an amazing interview with Kevin Lee. Uh, Oh, I did catch part of that, actually. He's trained with Kevin Lee in the past. I really enjoyed it because they talked about the weight cut process you kind of get it. You kind of get inside Kevin Lee's head. He kind of just went through, like just a step by step thing, how he felt in his hotel. Talks about the how staff stressed and out he was. Said he was under a lot of stress. He's usually not like that, but he says he admit, admittedly, he was very nervous for the fight. He's like, "This is a big step up, like in my career, and I've never fought for a belt." And he said, I was pretty stressed out. You know, I'm pretty nervous. So, he said that's kind of why it was a bitch to cut the the rest of that remaining weight in that hour. I uh, sure. said at one point they put boiling water, um, near boiling water, in his bathtub. And he also says oh, he doesn't uh, remember cutting that. Yeah, that he said he he became delirious. It's almost like you're drunk. And remember, Chael was talking about that. He's felt that way too. And it just I I really like this episode a lot because it really just kind of 
further reinforces the notion that either you needed more stipulations in weight cutting or you just need to bring in some new weight classes because this is just unacceptable to me. For Especially sure. that guy in what was it, Pancreas oh, last that week was who near fucking died. Dude who got out. carried to the fucking scales just, and then went three rounds to, to a decision. You just can't be doing that stuff and that's why I really appreciate the episode. I really did I appreciate it a lot also because Kevin showed a lot of maturity. He's very he thanked, humble in defeat. He even thanked uh, Tony. He's like, I wanted yeah. to, I want to thank Tony because he showed me a. Le- I learned a shitload in that fight. Yeah, he's like, those elbows on top of him. my head were fucking something I never trained for. Yeah, I said, oh, I'm gonna steal that now. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm gonna do that to people for sure. <laughs> so yeah, I, I'm, I'm just listening to this made me an even bigger fan of Kevin Lee. And uh, if he decides to go to welterweight, which is saying he's probably going to do, mm-hmm. um, all the best luck to him. I know there's a lot of big killers in welterweight. True. He, I think he's savvy enough to pull some wins. He's together. a big lightweight, yeah, though. I mean, like, RDA is doing well, so I don't see why Kevin Lee can't. True. Yeah, and they're pretty much the same size. Yeah, it's crazy. I found out this week fucking Paul Felder walks around at 195. Dude's cutting fucking 40 pounds. This is too much. I know it's probably <laughs> obviously mostly water, but still, man. Still, though. Jesus Christ, dude's a big dude. Makes me nervous for that Iaquinta fight that got announced. At first, I was like, oh, I think I got Iaquinta in that. But when I hear he's that big, I'm like, I don't know if I got Iaquinta in that anymore. Uh, pretty fucking wild. Uh, that's tight, dude. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to catch the last half of that episode since I only really caught the first half. Uh, and then my camp miss for this week is Jordan Breen show the tiramisu episode. Of course. Yeah, it's I actually picked this uh, one because they basically talk a lot about the uh, 20th anniversary of Pride since they recorded on actually on the day uh, that were 20 years ago to the day. Um, and J- Breen, if you guys don't know, is basically an encyclopedic knowledge of uh, all j- all things Japanese MMA specifically, but he's. He is kind of Otzi when it comes to how well he knows MMA. Uh, that's God right. It, Not man. Otzi with an N. Otzi is an autistic, but the cute kind. Yeah, dude, uh, do you realize like National Autism Awareness is like in a couple weeks? Hey, so, you better not Remind me on the show. <laughs> Fucking Aussie day. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> to be... F- Alright, anyway. Back on topic. Uh... <laughs> Dude, just call it like Rain Man or something instead of Otzi. Just call someone Rain Man, if anything. Yeah, that reference is kind of beat, though. So? <laughs> I'm going call someone fucking Otzi. <laughs> I don't but... know. Sounds pretty good. Uh, all right, so now that I've done offending hor- hor- horrific amounts of people, uh, uh, they talk a lot about the phrase... Jesus, I'm so off tra- track now. They talk a lot about the history of the phrase Pride Never Die, starting with uh, Pride 22, after uh, Naoto Mor- Morishita's uh, suicide. Because essentially... Well, let's put it this way. He worked for the Yakuza, owed them money, and then committed suicide in a in a hotel room. Oh, man. So he That's... for sure didn't get bodied by the Yakuza, though. <laughs> uh, um, wow. Yeah. Pretty rough, uh, but that was like basically where the they actually said the phrase "Pride Never Die" on the next show, which is kind of crazy because yeah. they fucking killed the dude so and said <laughs> "Pride Never Die." It's a little eerie. Yeah, it literally killed the president and then said "Pride Never Die" on the next one. Kind of weird. Uh, and then Ant and Breen talk a lot about their favorite Pride moments from like the Randall Plex when Randleman dumped Fedor on his head. To uh, Anderson Silva walking out to the ring doing a Michael Jackson yep, impression. that's hilarious. All of that shit. Uh, and then Jordan Breen uh, makes a real sweet Soul Train line reference, which Ant is like, Breen, I need to give you props. You are officially the first white person I've ever heard make a reference to a Soul Train line. Uh, and then it turns into a crazy tangent about Soul Train and all the weird characters who are like now dancing in alleys and have lost their mind. Uh, which is a, evidently a true story. Uh, again, Breen knows crazy pop culture shit. Uh, then they talk about an MMA reporter Grand Prix, uh, and Breen says Dave Mandel and Luke Thomas would fuck everybody up. Uh, Breen describes Luke Thomas as if you took two Nate Diaz's and stuck them side by side like Siamese twins. That's pretty funny. Fucking hilarious. Uh, and then also Pat Wyman and Mike Jackson got nominated for the uh, for the journalist GP. <laughs> Uh, which is pretty fucking hilarious. Uh, they did mention that they're going to definitely do Shudo 2004 on a future collapsed MMA. Uh, and then... I think they also... Oh, no, that's on the other show they announced that. Um, oh, and then at the end it ended with uh, Jordan Breen arguing that Predator is the best action movie ever up until Mad Max Fury Road came out. 
that show is just all over the place. But it's Brinus has such a deep knowledge I, of Japanese MMA. It's it's I, it's absolutely worth checking out just for that. He does make up a good point. With Predator. So if I'd almost argue Terminator Two is is Predator. Yeah, Terminator Two is probably the go to. But is Predator the one with Oleg Tartaroff in it? Because then I'm back on board. I think that's the no. Remake, that was though. that was the, no. That was the. Um, it's like unofficial Predator sequel. 3? It's called Predators. It was like Predator. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've done a commentary um, for that. If y'all go look up Doom yeah. and Geo. No, but the, the the original Predator was fucking badass. I mean, like Arnold Schwarzenegger, Jesse Ventura. That's you know, right. Uh, Jesse Duke, the Body Ventura. Carl Weathers. You know, just a classic '80s. And God Shane damn it, Black. Gorilla. Shane Black uh, was in it. And now he's directing the reboot. Oh, so, crazy. Yeah. That. I mean, reboots always suck, but hopefully this one's all right. You can you can do that movie. In a fun, campy way. Uh, I, yeah, I don't know. But okay. overall, yeah. just a great fucking episode from Jordan Breen. Um, Let's see. I was going to say real quick. Yeah. Um, I listened to the episode Talk and Talker. Oh, um, that's a great one. Yeah, they didn't talk too much MMA. but No, they, they did talk a lot about showers, though. That was hilarious. The fact that DC said it, a.k.a. No one likes when they see him come to the shower because what he'll do is hide your eyes. Yeah, hide your eyes. <laughs> he'll get his loofah, smack someone in the eyes with soap, so they go, "Oh shit!" and then smack them on the ass. So then they're like, they're just really confused and have no idea what the fuck is going on. Yep, and evidently it's such a thing that people like run when DC goes in the showers because he just fucks with everybody, including Crazy Bob Cook. <laughs> Fucking poor Crazy Bob Cook. Yeah, and that was crazy. Uh, what was Bob talking about? He at one point was living in a porn warehouse. Yeah, he was living in a porn warehouse with, God damn it, who was the list of people? Because it's insane. Josh Thompson, Rich, uh, Rich Crunkleton, and a couple other people. Really weird. Uh, yeah, there's a, there's some great fucking quotes about DC hitting the showers. Uh, crazy Bob uh, says, when he hits the showers, or when DC hits the showers, everyone runs. He also says the phrase, it's gotten progressively worse. Uh, here's another quote. I don't turn my back, I don't wash my face with soap, but he's got a new strategy. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Fucking hilarious. Oh, man, yeah, he just walks in through all the shower attacks, and it's fucking real, real goofy. Um. Oh, DC also mentioned on that episode that people told him in his ear not to talk about the staff on the broadcast oh, after yeah. Rogan brought it up. Rogan's like, <laughs> yeah. is that staff? And I guess in his earpiece, they're like, don't yeah, talk yeah. about the fact that it's staff. Yeah. And DC's like, yeah, it's, it's staff. <laughs> yeah, he's like, yeah. <laughs> Pretty fucking funny. Uh, yeah, fucking DC hitting people in the face and then smacking them on the ass. What the fuck? He also says he tries to do it to Kane Velasquez sometimes, but Kane just gets looks at him real angry and DC runs. I swear to God, they sound like a bunch of twelve year olds hanging out, but it's fucking hilarious. And DC, like it, listening to that show, it's fucking impossible not to like DC. Like if people who dislike yeah, DC so listen to, to that listen, show. Yeah. He's super funny, and he's uh, super down-to-earth. I like that guy a lot. Uh, yeah, it was a super fun episode. Actually, you know what? Did you listen to any new shows this week? No. no. Actually, you know what? I'll save my new show for the very end, because it's relevant. Uh, but why don't you... Uh, did you listen to any other ones you wanted to shout I out? I listened to Co-Main. Um, didn't take any notes, like shithead, but... I do remember on Are You Fucking Kidding Me, Ian McCall, when he was at MMA Hour, said, Yeah, you know what? I'm a free agent now. Um, I wouldn't mind going over to Russia to fight for ACD. And then Ariel asked him about Kadyrov or whoever it was. He was like, Oh, he's like, Well, yeah, there's evil people in the world. You know, and that, what that guy does is fucked up. But I don't give a shit. I just yeah. want to get money. I believe something. it was, I'll fight for blood money. I don't no, give a yeah, fuck. Yeah, that's, <laughs> something yeah. along those lines. Yeah, I mean, that's just how Ian McCall, Ian McCall talks, too, yeah. though. I know people on Reddit hate Ian McCall, too. They're like, he's a rich, privileged, white privilege. It's because he grew up in OC, and like yeah. he has a crazy history in MMA, which people still are all uppity about. They still blame him for the uh, that one dude who passed away, um, which is a bummer of a story. Yeah, overall, I like Ian. But yeah, that that was a pretty good episode of uh, of uh, Co-Main also. And they've been having that uncaged uh, uh, sponsor for that card game. The card game. And they, that card game guys actually showed up on the MMA community forums too. Uh, so evidently they're going to send out some free copies to some guys and have them uh, give feedback. <laughs> so what is this? Something in the App Store? No, it's like a physical card game. Oh. It's like a $20. They send you like card game, like a huh. deck of cards and it's like fucking... MMA version of uh, 
MTG. Or probably more realistically, the MMA version of uh, Hearthstone. Magic the Gathering. I was, gonna, I was gonna say, I'm assuming MTG's magic? Yeah, yeah. I don't fucking play any... I don't have long enough hair, <laughs> and I uh, am not a big enough nerd anymore to play uh, Magic the Gathering. Actually, I never was. I definitely bought a lot of weed off guys who played a lot of Magic yeah, the Gathering. Yeah, I'll just say but... this. The last time I played card games to that, I was probably 11 or 12. I'm just not into card games. Yeah, I, I know a bunch of stoners who I would buy weed from that would uh, play a lot of that game. And I was like, I'm good, bro. I'm, I'm going to take off. You guys have fun playing fucking hearts or whatever. <laughs> Um, yeah. Fucking, I don't know, I forgot how we got here. Oh, right, <laughs> Co-Main. Yeah, pretty good episode, but I didn't have any real notes on it either. Uh, I did listen to, however, Collapse MMA, UFC 39 Part 2, the best ever. Because uh, if you remember, that's the card that has Phil Baroni on it. Yep. Uh, so they, they make some hilarious Larry Landless jokes, because he's on the card. And if you guys want to see a picture of Larry Landless from this summer... You can check it out on our website if you click the articles section. Uh, he was at the local, he was working the local MMA show at the Del Mar Fair that I have pictures from. Uh, and you can see Larry Landless's bleached head in person. Uh, I got a bunch of pictures of him, actually. So check that out. But um, let's see. They basically just go through the card and talk about all of them. It's fucking pretty hilarious. At one point, Jordan Breen, remember that clip I showed you of Phil Brony speedbagging a dude's head? Yeah, no, dude, that was pretty fucking bad. Yeah, so Jordan Breen went through and counted off the strikes, whether they were hits or misses, like oh, yeah, it was I, the game can I battle. I guess how many, like, would you call them significant strikes? He's doing heat, it, right? He threw, I'll, I'll just tell you, he went 12 for 13, speed bag in this dude's head, in like, I think, four or five seconds. <laughs> it's ridiculous. And he, Jordan Breen reads it off like he's playing the game Battleship. It's like, right hand, hit. Left hand, miss. Right hook, hit. Left hook, hit. Right hit, right straight, hit, left straight, hit, right straight, hit, left straight, hit. <laughs> it's fucking ridiculous. Uh, and the two misses are be- one because he's sprinting forward, and the other one's because Larry Landless, his arm gets in the way. <laughs> Stop it. I was either that or his head, he was already falling to the canvas. Yeah, he was. Well, he was, to be fair, he was falling the entire time. He was just staying up by how much he was getting hit in the face. Phil Brony's a goddamn madman. Um, God, this this episode goes so off the rails. They played the clip from Celebrity Rehab where Rico Rodriguez talks about dragging his girlfriend's body out of the car and putting it in the driver's seat after he hit a 15-wheeler. Also, what the fuck is a 15-wheeler? Where's the where's the odd wheel at? It's in the middle? <laughs> that is the most insane shit ever. Uh, it's, it's real crazy. Uh, they also talk about how they buried Jens Pulver with the new lightweight tournament when he left for Japan. Uh... Ryan Bennett introduces us to Jean Jacket Machado. Uh, they actually they use actual duct tape on the gloves during that card. Cabbage, you know, you ever heard of Wesley Cabbage Correa? I heard him on a. I think I heard Luke Thomas mention something, some cabbage or yeah, something. Yeah, I did not know that cabbage was actually a weed reference this whole time. They always make the joke. He's from fucking Hawaii. I should have put uh, that together a long time ago. They always make the joke of like, oh, they call him that because he looks like a cabbage patch doll. And uh, Breen mentions that, no, idiots, obviously it's because he smokes a shitload of weed. Uh, so never put that together, but I thought it was super funny. Um, and then they tell a bunch of sad Tim Sylvia quotes, like when he got busted for uh, when he got busted for steroids, he said he did it because he wanted to look better because Pat Militich and Jens Pulver kept calling him fat at the gym. <laughs> And shit like oh, that. Man. Just like the saddest Tim Sylvia quotes. You're Jesus. like, oh, buddy. Uh, just, re- it's hilarious. Uh, and then they end that episode saying that uh, they are going to do a Ultimate Fighter 14 finale coming up next. Uh, which part one is going to release on Monday. And then they confirmed for Halloween they're going to do the old WEC Halloween Fury card. Uh, which, if you check out our Twitter, I actually, a week before I knew that they were going to do that, I tweeted them asking them if uh, Collapse MMA was going to get some fury this Halloween. And I sent a picture of, uh, I forget the guy, the ring announcer, but he's dressed up as fucking Gene Simmons from Kiss. Oh. It's real dumb. It's real dumb. It looks looking. like it'd be kind of amusing, at least if he was like, in character or something like that. Yeah, if you look at our Twitter, it's, it's real dumb. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, it's it should be ridiculous, and that that especially that Halloween card is probably going to end up on the show uh, as 
one of my uh, picks because, god damn it, that that WC card is ridiculous. Um, and then that's it for that one. Is there any other podcasts you think people should check out? Um, no, that's it for me. Cool. The only other one I wanted to mention was the, uh, excuse me, the Morning Wood Show did episode 49. Oh, cool. When was the last time we did an episode? I honestly haven't even looked. It's been a bit. It's been like a couple months, I think. Um, and they actually brought that up on the show, and they said they'd basically just been crazy busy. Uh, Tyron has been doing a bunch of stuff all Wait, over the place. Is he, he's still recovering from surgery, right? I don't think he's had surgery or did he, yet. Or did he opt not to have surgery? He, I think he's going to have surgery, but hasn't had surgery yet. Also, here is... Actually, it's not Gene Simmons, I just realized. But this is... Oh, that's King Diamond. Sure. Yeah, he's dressed as King Diamond as the fucking announcer in an MMA fight. I think that's King Diamond. It's dude. the most the ridiculous black, shit. black metal guy from, like, the 70s. Sure, or sure. Whatever that means. There's a lot of satanic shit. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I showed Chris the uh, the uh, WEC picture. Really dumb. Uh, well, and be distracting. Yeah, that too. Uh, anyway, back to Tyron Woodley. Yeah, the first episode they've done in a while. He's calling in from a Thai restaurant in LA. Which is pretty <laughs> hilarious. It's actually not that loud in the background. It's pretty crazy. Um, and then, uh, let's see. Tyron is doing a weekly Friday show. Uh, for TMZ about sports, evidently, huh. which I did not know, uh, but that's why he's been super busy. Is because he did that. I, I was saying, I know the only other fighter that's openly been willing to do interviews and stuff with TMZ is Dominic Cruz. Yeah, so. uh, Tyron loves the TMZ guys, evidently. Like, I don't think they're pieces of shit. I think it's just a lot of the shit that they do yeah. is just lame. Well, and the main. But then again, that's their fucking job. Yeah. Well, and the main guy who runs TMZ evidently really likes Tyron because he was the guy who's like. Everybody likes Tyron when he does segments for us. Why don't we just get him to host something? Uh, so evidently he's doing a weekly show for them now, which is kind of weird. So he's been super busy with that, and he also was uh, busy auditioning for a Kevin's, Kevin Hart movie, which uh, Fat Joe beat him out for the role, which uh. is hilarious that your options are like, <laughs> do we want Tyron Woodley or Fat Joe? That's a big... Those are two very different people. That's a weird combo. Uh, but I thought that was pretty funny. Uh, and then other than that, oh, they did mention that Titleist is talking about picking up their podcast, which I hope does not mean it would only be available on fucking Titleist, which I believe is Jay-Z's music streaming thing, or some wait, fucking was... rapper. <laughs> wait, Titleist? I think of golf. No, I know you do. I know. <laughs> it, I think it's, it's, some, it's some fucking rapper's streaming thing. I think it's Jay-Z. Hmm. It's like him or Eminem or somebody like that. Uh, but anyway, yeah, evidently they might get picked up by that, so that could go good or bad. I just hope that they keep putting it out as a regular RSS feed. You're not going to make me subscribe to some garbage fucking program, because I'll drop your goddamn show so fast. Uh, despite how much I love Dean Thomas and Tyron. Um, oh, here's, he actually also mentioned the so shoulder surgery. He has not done it yet. He's going to have to rehab for four months afterwards. Um, dude, so he's going to be out for like. He said, like, it seemed like six, eight months still. Which is fine, because oh, no that puts one, it, like, May Dude, no so. wonder why RDA was being a dick. Look, hey, interim belt between me and Robbie. Yeah, but Tyron fought not that long. Yeah, I know, I know. And, this is the and thing. he fought four times this is in the a thing. year. You're not going to get an interim belt. No. Like, wait. It's ridiculous, yeah. You saw that Tyron tweeted him back talking shit, right? Yeah. It's like, why don't you worry about the guy I just beat before you go fucking run in your mouth? Or, or, and then you can come get these hands. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. said. Pretty funny. Uh, let's see. Dean Thomas talks about going to Vegas with Will Brooks for his fight before that fell through, which is a bummer because Nick Lentz is a fatty. Um, let's see. Tyron mentioned, oh, he was the one that mentioned that Paul Felder walks at 195. That's insane. Yeah. And then they talk about uh, how DJ is the yeah, goat. Yeah, 195. He should be cutting the welter weight. That's yeah. so retarded. I mean, I'm sure that's like regular walking weight. Like, he doesn't cut from 195. Yeah. I'm sure in camp yeah. he's like 170 or like 175, maybe 180. Uh, but yeah, he says like Paul Felder's a giant. Because, you know, that's exactly right. Because Tony Ferguson at the max would be 200 pounds, like he said. Yeah. And he said he'll, during camp would be 183. Yeah. He said he was 200 pounds twice during that camp. He cut down both times. Fucking crazy. Or I guess leading into that camp. But, yeah, pretty wild. But it's good to hear them come back because uh, I've missed their show a bunch. And uh, they said they're going to try and start doing it more regularly. That's awesome. So. I'm definitely going to have to listen to that episode for sure. Yeah, it's pretty dope. Uh, cool, man. Well, that covers all the podcasts I wanted to talk about. Is there any uh, news or anything you wanted to mention off the top? Um, I mean, people probably heard Lawler's fighting RDA in Winnipeg. And that's yep. pretty fucking cool. 
Um, Volkan is going to be fighting DC for the belt. But yep, but not until next, next year. year. Which is totally fine. Yo. Um, Let's see. Cejudo burned but did not break his fucking ankle leaving his house because of wildfires. That's good. And that sucks for all the people affected. The wildfires in Northern California. Yep. It's a fucking shame. The wildfires are not fun. Uh, yeah, it's I think they're actually always more of a risk than earthquakes. But. For sure. Uh, oh, Invicta and Pancrase announced a, part, or a talent sharing partnership, which is dope. Uh, Josh Thompson has a fucking podcast called Sammy and the Punk. So, look for that in a future oh, show. and by the way, what did uh, WMEING rebrand themselves as? I saw that. Uh, Endeavor. Endeavor, okay. Which is, that was the E in WME anyway. Oh, okay. Well, at least um, it's way less confusing. Yeah, because it was William Morris Endeavor before. And I think they got tired of WEMEIMC, or IMG owns the UFC at MSG. <laughs> Fucking Dana White. The oh, EGG. God. Um, yeah, the red, no, the tomato and the egg. Yeah, the it's R-E-D, E-G-G. Um, let's see. Oh, Eddie Mercado and Fraser Coffee, uh, Coffeen, Coffeen, a Bloody Elbow, uh, sixth round post-fight show, did a recap of the first Pride since it was the anniversary, which is kind of tight. Uh, Mark Hunt is out against Tybora. Yeah, so what, what was the deal with that? Dana pulled him? Yeah, well, I think the UFC pulled him. Okay. Because you can't be putting out articles that are self-published saying that you have CTE symptoms. Can't be doing that shit and expect to stay in a fight. So Um, Mark Hunt did it to himself. Basically. Uh, Sam Alvey replaces Trevor Hotsaw Smith next week, which is fucking short notice, but dope. Because I've got Sam Alvey on my fantasy team still. Oh, i got to check up on my fantasy team. Yeah, you need to pick up somebody from this next card. Uh, Rogan is switching to a new studio, which evidently has a fucking sauna and a pellet grill. <laughs> That's going to be a lot of interesting things now for some of these episodes. That's, GRE. Yeah, it should be. I bet you we're going to see a lot more cooks in the studio. Um, we're probably going to see a lot of Burt Chrysler and Tom Segura, too. He's probably going to yep. tell Burt, hey, get in the sauna. Speaking of Burt Chrysler, he was on uh, Joe Rogan's podcast yesterday for the last episode of the old studio. Uh, so hashtag Sober October and whatnot. Uh, still going strong. Still going boring. Um, TSN has an MMA show that they do, that they put out as a podcast. It was hosted by Elias Theodoro this week. Is that the Toronto Sports Network, stuff like that? Something like that. Um, And let's see. Talked about a lot of this other shit. Talked about Randy Brown on Reddit. Uh, Holy fucking shit. TwitchCon has Angie Hill, Demetrius Johnson, and Jen Pulver playing H1Z1 in a tournament this for like two hundred thousand dollars, right? Yeah, I think it's next Saturday on the twenty. No, it's the twenty first. Yeah, I think that's next Saturday. Uh, it's I think two p.m. on the on the West Coast. Uh, and yeah, it, it that's gonna be dope as hell seeing DJ Jens Pulver and Angie Hill all playing See, yeah, against each other. I kind of figured they played Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. I would figure that as well, but H one. I wonder. I'm sure it's sponsored by the H one Z one devs. They're like, so dear God, I, someone play our so game again. I, saw, I, I mean, I haven't looked at uh, one of DJ's uh, Twitch streams in a while, but I saw on Instagram he posted when he got one of the winner, winner chicken dinner things. Yeah. He started dancing to I Get oh, Money. Oh, we, we had that clip uh, in our uh, in one of our shows, actually. Because DJ gets way more excited about fucking winning a chicken dinner than he does about his fucking 11th title Total defense sense, to yeah. break a record. In which he hits a crazy person arm bar. Yeah, uh, goddamn, like, it's, it's not a suplex, but like, he just lifts him up and then... Just yeah, Ben Astrin called it a like a chin cup or something weird. Someone was saying all these different names like mousetrap or wizard something. Oh yeah, the mighty whiz bar is what DJ whiz wants bar, it to be called because yeah. of course uh, the wizard Matt Hume is his coach and that's who he learned it from. Uh, also, yeah, everyone else wants it to be called the mousetrap, but DJ says he has a different sub that no one's seen that's called the mousetrap, which how how you gonna tease us like that, DJ? That's ridiculous. Uh, and then. He, and then I think uh, my favorite that uh, what's his face's chat came up with was uh, Max Holloway's chat came up with the Mighty Plex, which is solid. That's a good it's one. Pretty good. Um, but yeah, th- that should be fun. Uh, and then the only other thing is uh, Weidman evidently is having hand issues, according to Longo on uh, Anakin Florian's that's podcast. That's a shame because isn't he supposed to fight Jacare soon? Yeah, that's that's why they asked him about it, and it's not scheduled yet because of that. Because Chris is still having hand problems. I wonder if he's kind of like AKA where he just goes too hard in training. Maybe. 
Because I have seen some videos of him training. That him dude and fucking, fucking Volante. You know, he pushes the fucking pace. For sure. So, I mean. Yeah, it's possible, man. Uh, actually, but speaking of DJ doing a Player Unknown's Battleground streams, uh, he. I So I watched his first stream back after he won the belt. Or after, after he defended the belt to break the, the record. So it was a record, yeah. Yeah, and uh, first off, evidently he's going to do a stream of Player Unknown Battlegrounds with Post Malone at some point, which is dope. That's interesting. Yeah, Post Malone the rapper, if y'all don't know. Uh, should be dope. Also, DJ is going to be in his first uh, Player Unknown Battlegrounds tournament this Saturday, the 14th at 2 p.m. Uh, and also, Jamie, young Jamie of uh, Joe Rogan fame is going to be in that. Uh, and then, so in that stream, where his first stream back, the first 27 straight minutes were just the sub emote thing ringing from new subs. He, he broke every record of sub numbers that he had by a shitload. That's great. It was 27, it's 10 seconds, the clip that plays, like the animated thing that shows up when someone subs. 27 oh, yeah, straight yeah. minutes. It was fucking long. It's real crazy. Uh, and dude deserves it. He, yeah, he got a shitload of new subs. Um, also, if you guys don't know, he gives away a bunch of shit like hats and UFC merch to everybody watching the stream. Um, and then he talked about how he played a ton of Marvel vs. Capcom in the hotel room in Vegas uh, when before his fight and after how, his fight. How is that game? I haven't, dude, to Sorry. be honest, I haven't played a fighting game since Mortal Kombat X a couple years ago. And I I'm still like, play Mortal Kombat X, that game's dude. Yeah, I haven't played that, but I am looking forward to, honestly, the new Dragon Ball Z fighting game that looks yeah, pretty fire. Yeah, dra- or Dragon Ball Fight- Fighter Z or, or something. Or Dragon Ball fighting game. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but that game looks pretty sick, too. Yeah, for sure. Um... Oh, and then uh, the only other thing that DJ did, which is a great example of why people don't know DJ at all. Like, dude's hilarious. Uh, like, for example, one dude donated $100, uh, $100 during the stream, and DJ says, fuck it, this is my new browser subscription. I'm buying all the browsers. <laughs> which uh, was fucking hilarious, and if you, like, it's something you would only hear him say on his stream, because he knows it's just a bunch of people who are just hanging out and talking shit. Uh, but fucking classic DJ in a way that most people don't know DJ. So pretty fucking funny. Also, he's just drinking stouts in the morning and <laughs> shit during it. No, dude, like, I remember that. Great. So he had like this fucking giant ass goddamn glass yeah. of like a stout. He, has a g- he just stout, has a dude. giant stout that he's sipping on the whole time. It's fucking, it's super funny. So I definitely recommend going and looking him up on Twitch. I will have a link in the description. Mighty Mouse UFC 125 is his name on it. And a funny motherfucker who plays way too much Battlegrounds. Uh, And then the only other thing I wanted to mention, because it is relevant to uh, the fact that we are actually going to put out two shows this weekend. We're going to do this regular podcast. However, there's not really a lot of MMA podcast, I mean, uh, MMA shows this weekend, apart from Ryzen, which I I know fuck all about most Ryzen fighters. Like, I know that Sakuraba is grappling Frank Shamrock, and I know King Reyna is fighting. That's what I know about this card. Uh, but uh, I d- we did want to put out some new content. So like we normally do, we're going to do a commentary. And for this week's commentary, we're going to be doing uh, Ken Shamrock, or the, the movie starring Ken Shamrock, Scarecrow Gone Wild. 2004 horror movie with uh, Ken Shamrock as the number one uh, like the listed top dude. Top build actor? Top build. I... It, it can't be good. I think it has like a... Is it... So it's probably Razzie worthy? I mean, let's put it this way. It's not streaming anywhere online that I can find from traditional media streaming. However, if you Google... We'll talk about it on the actual commentary. But if you Google it, uh, you can either buy a DVD copy for $2 on Amazon. That's the DVD copy is $2. Or uh, if you Google Scarecrow Gone Wild, I bet you Google can show you a place to watch it. Within like the first four results, uh, which is definitely the Amazon link and not anything else. Well, um, depending on uh, how much we like it or dislike it, I'll determine if two dollars is overpriced. I, I might. It. We'll find <laughs> out. We'll find out. Uh, but since we are going to be covering that movie, uh, I figured for my new show this week, I had to listen to the world's most dangerous podcast, Chris. Which is hosted by, of course, one Ken Shamrock and his co-host Daz. Some fucking long dumb name. He's uh, Chris. This podcast. Uh, Wait, what's the name of the podcast? 
It's W. Okay, so you can't look it up by going by searching "world's most dangerous podcast" because so it's a fucking acronym you have to search up. Yep, you have to search WMDP. So that's how you find the podcast. Trust me, I had to fucking fight to figure this out for like a couple, like a good ten minutes today. Uh, oh my god, Chris, this podcast. Uh, okay, uh, I'm just gonna go through my notes because um, I don't, I don't even know what to pick out from them. It's all just. So upset. I always get confused with Ken and Frank. Who's the older one? Uh, Frank is the larger and older one. Okay. Ken is the browner one, who's actually Mexican. I mean, Frank is the browner one, who's actually Mexican. Frank is the one... Oh, probably like on his mom's side or something like that? No, they're both adopted. They're not actually brothers. Really? Yeah, oh my god, you don't know the Bob Shamrock story where this old man basically just adopted a bunch of kids and had Ken fight him in gauntlets? Yeah, I know. Shamrock's just their adopted name. Yeah. Bo- yeah, uh, Dude, Bob now I gotta Shamrock. look at a photo of them again because, like, I know what they kind of look like. Like, I see yeah. them. You would, yeah, you know which one's which when you reckon when you see them. Uh, but yeah, Ken is the not Mexican looking one. Um, okay, I'm just gonna start going through this. Uh, the intro is morning radio like a motherfucker on this podcast. Uh, Des Woodruff and Ken Shamrock are the hosts. Des keeps doing this fucking radio voice, like, well, that's all right, Ken. Now. Tell, can you tell me about that? It's just like, oh, it's so fucking morning jock radio. Like, At least if he doesn't sound like Joe Buck. Yeah, just the worst morning radio jockey voice ever. Like, it's real bad. Uh, Ken gives a weird intro of, like, how their outlooks on life are, which is real awkward. Then Dez tells Ken uh, to tell people who Dez is. <laughs> this, that's how this podcast is starting. It's real rough. <sighs> Uh, they met each other at their ministry. Cut to it getting super Jesus-y all of a sudden. Um, oh, God. They talk about how uh, Ken met Dez because he was a big MMA fan and offered to drive Ken for their church event. Then Dez talks to Ken into his pyramid scheme sounding plans. Chris, this gets so off the goddamn rails. That's Ken That's Shamrock. That's Ken, yeah. Uh, so but Frank looks like he could be his real brother, like blood. Yeah, they, they don't look that different. Um, okay, Chris, this gets real off the rails though. So they now have a business. Are you paying attention? Because this yeah. gets really complicated and dumb let's, really quickly. Let's find out how terrible this sounds. So Ken and Dez uh, now have a new business where they pair celebrities and entrepreneurs together. Okay, that's their business. So basically, like what The Apprentice did. Even better. Uh, we'll get to it. Don't worry. It, it's going to get there. And oh my God. It's... I have... I have some shit to say. Um, oh boy. He... Okay. So Des teaches stock market classes on a computer. So he's super legit according to Ken. Because that... I always take my stock market classes online. Uh, Des basically reads Ken's Wikipedia page. And then says the phrase, He's known for leg locks. He'll pull those things off like chicken wings. Uh, Ken is saying that their podcast is unlike any other podcast, and just as he was saying that, I realized, holy fuck, this is just Joel Supernaut's podcast. <laughs> <laughs> say, it sounds like Joel. Literally, as say, he said that. Say, brother, a million times. No, that's brother, the only difference. Brother Sin. <laughs> brother Sin. Oh my god. Uh, my, my son, oh, Jesus. who has autism, but I still treat him like shit. <laughs> Yeah, God, no, it's, so this just keeps getting worse. Here's a quote. Sex, this podcast is about sex, drugs, faith, and politics. Okay, so uh, talk about ultimate contradiction, (laughs) sex, drugs, and faith. Nothing's off limits, Chris. Yeah. Uh, It's an AMA show mixed with business. These are all direct quotes. (sighs) I believe celebrity is like a commodity. It's another quote. Uh, And here is where it gets to the best, you guys. You don't understand. Okay. The plot of this podcast each week is they're going to do a segment called The Lion's Cage. This segment is where listeners write in to pitch Ken on inventions or products that he can endorse. So basically, give me all your ideas that I can steal and make money off of. They're calling it The Lion's Cage because it's kind of like Shark Tank. Exactly. It's They literally say it's like Shark Tank. I mean, they could have been smart or just they could have been typical called the Lion's Den. But sure, it's probably taken. Well, so yeah. let's call it it's the Lion's It's taken by Ken, who owns it. I don't know why they wouldn't do it. Uh, but holy fuck, the, literally the entire point of the show is to solicit shit for Ken to pimp. 
It's the first ever Potamid scheme, Chris. Are you understanding the oh, severity of, of oh, how no. crazy this, this is? This is really sad and tragic. It gets crazier. Their first submission is from a realtor who hosts TV and radio in Florida. Already hilarious. Of course, he's from Florida. <laughs> yes, of course. And of course, he's a fucking realtor. So, the, the real estate agent uh, buys time on radio to get celebrities on as a giant ad for his real estate. That's his model. Now, he wants to sell this model to people and give them basically like a fucking video of how to do it and then sell that to them so that then they can finance that out. <sighs> Ken likes this the is, idea this immediately. Is, this is upsetting. <laughs> Ken immediately is on board. He, he's like, you know, an idea like that could work if you had a celebrity involved like me. Yeah, maybe like, uh, remember those uh, commercials for early thousands with Montel Williams? Yeah. Like some just third bit actor I mean, that we cared about, and then he like promoted some shit. You know what I'm talking about? Like money problems? Yeah, look here, up. Here's, a, here's another quote. With bringing us in, you know, the Shamrock brand. <laughs> That's a quote. Uh, holy shit, he wants to do seminars. It's literally just the fucking tiny classified ads guy. You know the guy who killed himself in prison by stabbing himself in the dick and then hanging himself? That guy is doing the same business model as the dude pitching to Ken Shamrock. It's so the craziest he's shit gonna be of all time. A very terrible version of Tony Robbins. Right. Like, really, really, really dumb Tony Robbins. It's, ugh, oh, it's all so upsetting. Ugh. Oh. Yeah. And then it gets off the rails where they finally stop doing that segment, which I, after that, I was like, I'm exhausted. I was uh, going to say, you, I, you know what I feel bad for? Not the fact that, well, I feel bad the fact that you actually took the time to listen to this podcast, yeah. but the fact that you're doing it when you're sober. Yeah. it. <laughs> that's a great point. That's, uh, to be fair to me, I was very high when I was listening to this. <laughs> okay. Not drinking, but still, you'd have to be very high. Yeah. To even... <laughs> I mean, I felt, at least you could keep laughing. I, I fell high just off of how crazy that all of the shit that was happening was. Oh man! Uh, that Ken then goes off on a weird tangent, shitting on that running back that pulled that girl's tit out. Oh, Ezekiel Elliott. Yeah. Yeah, he just got resuspended. He, yeah, he talked for like eighteen hours about that dude and just like how he's a piece of shit. Uh, he Ken lets us all know, hey, you guys, he doesn't condone domestic violence. Thanks, Ken. Glad, good to know. Dude, 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 wasn't worried dude, about it until Shamrock you said had, like, that. Fucking five wives. I mean, yeah. No, dude, I remember. I, started, I remember my mom when she used to work for airlines. This is like ten. It's like ten, twelve years ago. My mom said, "Yeah, I work with Ken Shamrock's current wife." My mom was telling me that Which she's. One? I know, and I was like, "Yeah, mom, I remember I watched Ken Shamrock when he's in WWF." So, which yeah. wife? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, the one when he was getting hit in the fucking face with a chair. That one. Oh, and of course, my mom. I remember she told me that Ken Shamrock's wife's having marital issues. Of course, so. Yeah, well, yeah, she's married to Ken Shamrock. Yeah. Uh, oh God, he talk. Ken talks about what it's like being a celebrity. Des says the phrase "kahunas" instead of "cojones." Yeah, that's my favorite kahunas. burger too. The big Kahuna burger. Fucking from Pulp Jesus. Fiction. Uh, Ken talks about PEDs. He says he didn't know. That he was going to fail the drug test. <laughs> they said, I didn't know I was on him willingly. No, well, yeah, he said he, did, he didn't know he was going to fail a drug test, which is like. Yeah, that's hey, the weirdest I have way the to most, not I have say. the most important interview tomorrow with the Fortune 500 company. Let me just do a line of Coke. Oh, damn, he failed? Fuck! <laughs> it, yeah, it's like. Uh, he, and it's the weirdest way of. Technically, he didn't say he didn't do it. He just, he didn't, he said he didn't know he was going to fail, which I guess could be true. Bro, I, I, drank, I drank the detox drinks well, like three times. Yeah, well, and then he immediately brings up the dick shot from Hoist and talks about that. Oh, uh, yeah, that was kind of funny. Then he goes back and he's like, besides, it was minimal stuff anyway, and they rescheduled the drug test on me. It's like, bro, that means you did. That means you did it. You know, you just said it was minimal stuff, which was testosterone. So I don't know, minimal. And then second off, they rescheduled the drug test on you, which means you were literally cycling and they fucked you by not telling you the right date. Like, come on, bro. Oh man. Uh, and then he claims that the failed drug test negated the need of the nuts, and that's why they didn't overturn the hoist fight. Oh my god. Uh that was all in one hour and it I can't imagine this show gets any crazier, but I'm probably gonna have to listen again because I can't imagine they can keep that level of chaos going for that long. Also, I fucking hope people start writing in with really shitty fake conventions for this and start trolling the shit out of Ken Shamrock because 
or uh, not even Ken Shamrock trolling the shit out of the moron who's working with Ken Shamrock and clearly trying to pyramid scheme Ken Shamrock's money. It is so bad. Everything was so upsetting about this show. Jesus fucking Christ. Um, I've never heard a podcast literally be an infomercial for a, people to bring products to Dude, a celebrity. I feel like Ken Shamrock would be the kind of guy to try to sue McDonald's during March when they have their Shamrock shakes. <laughs> Probably. Oh my god, or sue the Lion King because they use the phrase Lion's Den in, you know, the, in the movie. Why don't just sue the whole country of Ireland? Yeah. Is that it? <laughs> yeah, it checks out. Oh my god. All right, well, I guess we're going to wrap this segment here. Uh, Jesus Christ, Ken Shamrock. That, I, that, so good news, we're watching a movie with Ken Shamrock in a little bit, so that'll be fun. Uh, but I guess we'll jump quickly into our next segment here. We'll take a quick break. Uh, let me see what our clip is going to be. Um, uh, oh, that's right. I forgot to mention our intro was the quote of DJ at the MMA hour, talking about no one's defended 11 times and it's a big fucking deal. Uh, I thought that was hilarious. And our break that's coming up is actually going to be uh, the MMA Depress Us talking about the creepy family drama narrative that they made up during the fights. Uh, so listen to that, and then we'll be back to briefly talk 216 and uh, before we go into, excuse me, recording our commentary. So we'll be back. <laughs> Nope, he's just got that leg cinched up. Which means almost certainly that in round two, Bob is going to hit an instant takedown and it'll look exactly like this round. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's a reason he shows this fight. Not a good sign for Mo. His, his, his large son is beating the shit out of him as we speak. It's true. This is, this is like when dad used to like totally owning his kid, the whole all grown up. And then one day he comes yeah. in late and he's like, I'm going to teach you a lesson. And, like, <laughs> Not, no, not anymore. And his son instantly takes him down and holds him there for five minutes. <laughs> right, yeah. What an amazing family drama that would be. Yes. <laughs> this, uh, this, this whole event is just family drama. At first it was Henry Hooft fighting his ex-wife's new lover. Uh, <laughs> and now we've got, uh, <laughs> we've got Mo Smith losing a fight to his upstart adopted son. back to briefly talk about 216 uh, before we get into uh, our commentary that we're going to do as a separate episode to be fair but we're recording it right after this so fucking listen how you want uh, but I wanted to briefly talk about this card because god damn there were some fun fights on 216 yeah let me th- let me see when I yeah because you didn't catch the early prelims right yeah uh, we, uh, we were texting I, about I it I had watched it at Tap House uh, with my buddy Jordan, um, I had got there at the end of the Duke and Wah fight. Nice, that's what's up. Um, well, I guess I'll mention some of the early ones I caught. Uh, could I catch everything all the time? Because I'm a goddamn crazy person. Uh, Brad Tavares and Talos Ladies pretty much went kind of how people expected. Uh, Brad Tavares with a lot of volume and pressure. Talos Ladies with some butt scooting towards the end and unanimous decision. Uh, John Moraga fucking melted Magomed Bibolatov with the left hand. I Jesus forgot, was, Christ. Was Bibolatov the favorite? Yeah, yeah. by a big fucking chunk. Because uh, he's the dude who's uh, one of Kadyrov's oh, guys. Oh, I remember. Uh, that's why last week I was like, I'm with Moraga because I can't support someone who's Kadyrov. And you're like, yep. well, you're wrong. Well, I guess it worked out coincidentally. Worked out real well for you. Because uh, he fucking melted Bibolatov. Even though, to be fair, like a dumb shit, I did show his talent slightest. That's yeah. 
I mean, to be fair, Talos Lightis, it was it was a close fight, but Brent, Brad Tavares definitely took it just off volume and pressure. Um, but yeah, really impressive performance by John Moraga. Uh, got basically Bilatov started with his fucking crazy kicking game and like lunging overhands, and eventually Moraga just timed him and started to piece him the fuck apart. Um, super impressive from John Moraga, and that dude is uh, that puts him back in a big way in this division. Because uh, every time anyone loses to DJ, they just all of a sudden drop to the bottom of the list and start working their way back up. I forgot uh, how long ago was it when he lost to DJ. It's been a couple fights. Okay. Uh, I believe. Here, we'll take a look. It's crazy, dude. I almost, <laughs> I almost feel like every flyweight had a title shot. Yeah, it was a while ago. 2013. Because uh, he's coming off the wins over uh, Mokhtarian and then Bibulatov, and then he had that run against, uh, or that run of losses against uh, Joby Wan and Sergio Pettis and uh, whoever the fuck Pereira is. Mateus Pereira? I don't even know. I don't know who that is. Yeah, some Brazilian. Evidently. Three names, so you gotta go Brazilian, right? If one of them's Pereira. Pereira. Yeah, Jana's or other pa- cousin. Paheja. Is it Paheja? Wait, I bet he's not even fucking Brazilian, Chris. His name is Mateus. Oh, God damn it! Giant Brazilian flag in the background of his picture. <laughs> yep. Nicola, Nailed it. All oh, right. Uh, yeah, anyway, fucking super impressive performance from uh, Moraga. Excited to see him out there again. Uh, Matt Chanel got the win over Marco Beltran. Uh, basically just outworked him. I remember I had no logic in choosing Matt Chanel, except, yeah, he looked pretty good on tough. Yeah, and he looked pretty good here. Uh, he just outworked him 100%. Uh, and Beltran never really... Never really. I mean, he would throw some like lanky out, like high kicks on the outside and stuff towards the end. But how was Beltran's cardio? Isn't he like five eight and he's a flyweight? It was better than it was the last time, um, because the last time was his first time down at that weight, and he made weight fine. He was one of the earlier guys that weighed okay. in, if I remember. He just but, must have the right frame. Yeah, I know where you just might have gotten used to the weight or oh, not, yeah, not cut so. down as much, you know. Um, but I don't know. It, it, I would have liked to see more output from him, uh, but. What are you going to do? Uh, Botelo beat Pro Gonzalez, uh, not like I thought she would, where Pro Gonzalez just holds on to a really shitty double leg attempt against the cage while she gets elbowed in the head for three rounds. That's what happened all three rounds. Well, it was basically just Botelo, their back against the cage, elbowing the shit out of Pro Gonzalez in the head. Um, and that won her the fight because Pro Gonzalez didn't really do anything. Uh, it's kind of what I expected. But I expected Pro Gonzalez to not be able to get the takedown, uh, but I didn't expect... I expected Poliana to not get stuck against the cage as much and work yeah. more of a striking game. Um, overall, the fight was fine, though, uh, but nothing that special. Unlike the next fight, fucking Lando Venata and Bobby Green tried to kill each other. I did see the highlights. They looked pretty crazy. Did you see the fucking flying knee to a grounded opponent? Yes. <laughs> Jesus yes. Christ, Lando Venata. Fucking such a wild man. Uh, yeah, that first round was for sure a 10-8, but it turned into a 10-9 uh, when Lando Venata essentially just, uh, like I said, flying knee to down an opponent and immediately had a point taken. Um, and then Bobby Green started to come back and fucking smash Lando Venata. Especially at the very end of that fight, he fucked him up on the feet. Um, awesome fucking fight. If you guys missed it, absolutely should go back and check it. Both the draws on this card were fucking incredible. Um, and I'm starting to like seeing draws. First off, I like that they're scoring correctly. And second, it generally means there was a 10-8 round somewhere, and then the yeah. other person came back. Yep. Or some, like someone came back in, in a 10-10 fight where someone got a 10-8. Um, so it always makes it fun. And holy shit, what a fight. Uh, Cody Simon versus Tom Dukenwa. Cody Stamen. I always do that. Uh, well, fucking Connor thinking, Rebush. You're probably thinking of Josh Simon. Right? Oh, or Salmon. Yeah, it's some, Josh Simon. Yeah, it's exactly what it is. Uh, yeah, so Cody Stamen took on Tom Dukenwa and just wrestled the shit out of him. Well, didn't we pick Dukenwa? Like, he was pretty favored. Yeah, I didn't think Dukenwa was just going to get fucking taken down the entire time. Um, on the feet, Dukenwa looked good, but he didn't have a ton of output. Um, and then every he just kept getting taken down over and over and over. Um, super impressive performance from Cody Stamen, putting a halt to someone a lot of people are real high on. Um, and it definitely mo- gets that dude's name out there in that division. Uh, and now everyone gets to watch more Flowercock. 
so, I mean, if you guys have not Stamen caught, Stamen is yeah, it was uh, one of the podcasts they call him Flower Dick or Flower yeah, Cock because it's the name of Stamen is like the word it's the for name of a flower's flowers, genitalia. Yeah. It's a th- whole thing. Um, anyway, yeah, if you guys have not heard, uh, what was it the vivisection? I think. I think it's uh, heavy hands. Also, heavy hands, Connor yeah. does it on every show he's yeah. on. Yeah. So uh, if you guys hear Connor Rebush on a show uh, that Cody Stamen is uh, on, fucking have some fun with the flower puns. I believe Daisy Dick was one of the recent ones. Uh, it fucking cracks me up every time. Anyway, uh, Benil Darius and Evan Dunham was a hell of a fucking fight. We both had Benil Darius in a uh, fantasy yeah, league. Yeah, dude, I was Didn't like, turn out so when good. I saw him knock him down with his elbows, I I'm thought, like, here we go. <laughs> and, like, the end of that round, he was just slaughtering him. Like, Evan Dunham almost didn't make it out of the first round. Yeah. Ugh, it was crazy. Um, and then Evan Dunham started coming back. Ben- Benil was gassed after that first round. Um, and then Evan Dunham slowly started coming back, and another draw, another good decision. Um, man, the, just super fucking fun fights, super fun fights. Uh, so I can't wait to see more of all of those dudes, because um, those are just crazy as hell. Uh, and they actually probably should have been on the main card above uh, the Venata Bobby Green fight should have been on there above uh, Maria Barrera yeah. Barella versus. Uh, Quindra Faria. Despite this being a fun fight, uh, holy shit, what a goddamn smashing by Barella. Uh, Mar- Mara Romero. Fuck, I always... Too many vowels. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There you go. Yeah, get your get real Italian on it. We'll yeah, dude, right. that's why I chose him. Like, oh, she's Italian. I don't know who this other person is. So, even though I remember the back of my mind, I was like, wait, I think I've seen this chick lose before. We saw her in Invicta, yeah. Yeah. But so. she, uh, she's been working at ATT, and it shows because she straight uh-huh. smashed this girl to the ground, immediately passed, punched her in the face until she turned over and choked her unconscious. Or not unconscious, but choked the shit out of her. Um, and just super impressive performance. Uh, I mean, just... I No part of, as we talked about earlier, no part of her game used to look like that. And she's been at ATT for, I think, like two or three months. And she looks like a completely different fighter. So you know she's just going to war with these monsters, like all yeah. these monster 115ers no, in ATT. She, she looked great. Um, and and yeah, 35ers for that and Yeah, especially if you're ATT, she's probably seen JJ, or at least probably trained with JJ. JJ, bit. Amanda Nunez, all those all girls, them, yeah. yeah. And what's funny is I remember, I think it was uh, Comain, they said, oh, what was up with her translator speaking Portuguese? Isn't he Italian? And, and then I think they're like, dude, that's Italian. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, oh... Super funny. <laughs> um, yeah. The, it, super impressive performance, though. Uh, and speaking of impressive, Fabrizio Verdum just went and fucked up while Harris on the ground. Good lord. Luke Thomas does a much better breakdown than we will ever do on this. Uh, and his Monday Morning Analyst, which I recommend checking out, is a really good breakdown of exactly how Verdum just completely broke down Wall Harris uh, grappling-wise. Um, and it's it, it was just incredibly, incredibly smooth performance from him. Yeah, I mean, once I saw him take him down, I'm like, okay, well, Harris is okay now. Especially like, when oh. he chained that single leg, you're like, alright, yeah. this is over. Yeah, I mean, uh, I can't remember if Fabricio said in the post-fight press conference, I deserve a title shot. I don't think he said that. I mean, I'd hope he wouldn't say that, but knowing him, he probably did. Yeah, that sounds like some shit he would say, for sure. I think, actually, you know what, yeah, he actually did say that, because I remember Reddit was like, this guy is insane. <laughs> But his logic is, oh, I beat someone in a minute. It's like, dude, this guy's like not even ranked twenty, probably like. Right. No respect to Harris, he's still like a new guy. But... Yeah, and I th- although I think for Doom just said he just already signed to a fight, didn't he? Like again? Mm-hmm. Hey, who the fuck's he fighting now? I forget. I'm pretty sure he just, or maybe it's Wall Harris. I think they both Harris. are. Well, I, I think Harris. Ah, uh, I want to say for Doom just got another fight announcement. Uh, but I can't remember who it's against, so maybe I'm making that up. There's been a shitload of fight announcements over the I don't last even week. know who it would be against right now, considering you still got Nganu and Overeem. Yeah, I think it was somebody further down than that, but I can't think of who it would be. Um, anyway, we'll Chase keep going. Chase Sherman? I don't know. I, Chase Sherman's scheduled for a fight? Oh, no, yeah, I think you're right. I think Isn't he, he on? I think, I think he has a scheduled fight. I'm pretty sure he might even be fighting next week. But didn't you pick him up on fantasy? Because I remember I looked for him and I think someone had him. Ready. I don't think I did. I think somebody else did. I don't remember though. Um, anyway, we'll keep moving on. Uh, Demetrius Johnson done embarrassed another motherfucker in the, in the octagon. 
Uh, oh my god, everything about this fight. What was the final tally? It was like 130 to 20 or something like that in strikes. Some insane no, number. No, more than that, dude. It was probably at least 200. He probably landed at least I think it was 100, one, like 180 strikes, right? Something I think insane. it was like in the 150s. But still, 150 to like 20 or 30. Oh, dude, I'm dumb. I'm thinking of boxing because there's way more volume. Yeah, so you're probably, that's probably like in the 150s. Which well, is the attempt really was high. in the twos, so. Yeah. Just crazy, crazy pace. Uh, DJ just kept allowing Ray Borg get into just fucked up scrambles and then out scrambling him over and over again. Yeah, because I remember he was saying like in the camp before Ray Borg was like, "I can scramble better than him." Yeah, his scrambles aren't that good or something like that. So yeah. So of course DJ just goes and embarrasses you with the shit you're good at, like yeah. he does with everybody. And then he hits that fucking not suplex. Shouts out to Ben Askren. Uh, I'm gonna call it whatever. I'm gonna call it whatever the fuck Ben Afrin said on Twitter. He hits that shit to an armbar midair. Uh, just goddamn ridiculous. Oh no, dude! Everyone at Tap House was like, oh. I'm sure. Like, there was someone. This one guy was like, oh, I've never seen that. No before. one's ever seen yeah. that. I was like, oh yeah. Huh. Except for people who've been watching DJ train, because evidently yeah. there's a handful of people who've been seeing DJ hit that in the gym for like the last couple of months. And it was nice too. I sat next to two people that actually have watched MMA before, on like that one guy I told you about, who was trying to convince me Nate Diaz walks at around two fifteen during camp. Sumo, bro. That's Su- death yeah. sumo. That's sumo style. <laughs> yeah, the sumo style Ariel. Okay, <laughs> Tim Tebow. <laughs> Jesus God damn Christ. <laughs> Fucking Skip Bayless. Um, anyway, yeah, but it was, you said you were sitting next to people that actually knew what the fuck they yeah, were talking they, about. Yeah, they basically, they knew what the fuck they were talking about. It's always nice when you're not sitting next to someone that's like, Fucking knee! And two dudes are on the ground, you're like, alright, great. Head you're, bottom! Yeah. <laughs> fuck them up! You're like, alright, thanks, Grandpa. Um, alright, so I guess we'll mention the main event also. Uh, Tony Ferguson fought uh, Kevin Lee and whatever was growing on his chest. Um, and evidently, Tony Ferguson was aiming right at whatever was going on in his chest a bunch. Yeah. yeah. Tony Did Ferguson he say was he a crazy hit, he person. Hit a couple times? Yeah, he said he, he uh, kept aiming for it. And luckily, since he kept ducking, he kept hitting him in the face. Because um, Tony Ferguson's a crazy person. Kevin Lee had a super strong first round, though. Oh, he looked fantastic. He got that mount and was fucking Tony up at the end of the first round. Um, and Tony survives, like always, uh, and then Kevin Lee already started slowing down, he hit a couple more takedowns in the second, and then by the third round, he was fucking gassed. Oh no, I remember, I think in his interview with Chael, he was talking about, he said, yeah, at this point, I was just breathing so fucking hard, I was like, god damn it, he's like, cause, you know, he realized, damn, I'm just versing some crazy dude right now, so like, what kind of energy am I gonna have to be able to throw any sort of ball at you? True, and he came out way too amped at the beginning of the fight, like, he fucking came out like BJ Penn at UFC 39, or no, yeah, not 39. Yeah, to be fair, he did say he was, was pretty nervous for the fight, obviously you're not gonna show that in right. media, but that's probably just getting rid of all that anxiety. Yeah, but he was way, he ran out way, and got way too hyped and burned off a ton of adrenaline, yeah. uh, which is like a classic fucked fucking mistake uh, that people do a lot um, but yeah super impressive from Tony incredible transition to hit the triangle uh, just fucking beastly crushed Kevin Lee with a shitload of elbows before finishing the triangle oh yeah those elbows were the difference maker I think they were nasty yeah. for sure uh, yeah and Tony Ferguson is a motherfucker uh, and then he gets on his McNugget bandstand which is the fucking Weakest ass response. McNugget's the worst nickname. It's the worst. It's really just cause, because he's got Mick and you're calling him a chicken. We get it, bro. But like, come on. Yeah. And I guess it even makes more sense because don't it doesn't isn't the fucking El Kakui supposed to be eat chicken? No, wait, that's the well, El Kakui is just boogeyman. I know. What's the one that eats chickens? That's not El Kakui. Chupacabra. Thank you. He's not the chupacabra. So why the fuck does he stick with the McNugget uh, bit so much? Chupacabra's actually goats. Just oh, it is goats. It no, is I, was thinking, goats. I was thinking sheep, but I was Shit. like, no, that's New Zealand. So it's gotta be goats. I was thinking chupacabra too, though. See, now I'm all over the place. My point being, fucking please stop with the McNugget bullshit. That is as bad as who the fuck is that guy. Well, at least Habib was like, when is your chicken? Yeah, (laughs) number one bullshit. (laughs) Habib's the funniest, though, that's why. Um, I can't wait until that guy comes back, because I still think he could beat a lot of the top down. Yeah, Habib is uh, pound for pound the funniest unintentionally in the UFC, probably. Number one bullshit. 
Uh, oh, and so you where's even, your son? I will, I will beat your son, Dana. Well, he even congratulated Tony. He's like, congratulations, yeah. champ. You, you have the real belt. Like basically, so. I mean, everyone knows it. <laughs> yeah. Connor's not coming back for that shit. I mean, Habib is smart. That's why he wanted to fight Tony. He's like, he's the best in division. I yeah. fight Tony Ferguson. Yeah, you know. Um, but yeah, overall, f- super fun card though, right? Yeah, man, I enjoyed this card a lot. Um, I, I'm only briefly and in one sentence going to say like fucking Everlast, bro. Come on, Dana White. <laughs> really? That's that's. Are we st- I didn't know it was still the fucking just bleed fucking face the pain era of fucking music choices that Dana is doing. I mean, it wasn't Kid Rock. I give him that. It That's wasn't. Li- it wasn't Fred Durst. But like, and I like Everlast. Good dude. Love him on Joe Rogan podcast. And it wasn't fucking. Nickelback. Yeah, that's true. But oh man. Yeah, it wasn't Smash Mouth or Sugar Ray. Exactly. Oh god. But, but oh, uh, no. And I like Everlast, but like, ugh, yeah, it's rough. Um, but yeah, other than that, a fun card. And uh, I was the two draws. Rarely do you see two draws on the card, and rarely are they both that goddamn good. Yeah, those so, are both great fights. Yeah, a lot of fun. And uh, I am. I guess that wraps that up. Um, I think there was something else. Oh, Bellator was pretty good last weekend. Oh yeah, shouts out uh, congrats to Darren Caldwell. Darren Caldwell. From Alliance. Yep, bringing back his uh Darren Caldwell bringing back the belt to Alliance. Uh and if you guys want to see a cool drawing of Darren Cal- Caldwell, go on Angie Hill's Twitter at Angie Overkill and uh she's been doing sketches cuz if you guys don't know she has like an art degree. So she's just been doing sketches of like, Oh, I think I saw Chris Stanley and she did sketches of Robbie Lawler and uh, a couple other people. Pretty dope. Oh, she did a hilarious one of Rampage. Which actually might be our artwork for this week. We might use the Rampage one of Rampage, uh, of some dude explaining sushi to Rampage. Or you should do the one uh, he did on Instagram where it's like four years ago for Halloween. He looks ridiculous as oh, Batman. Yeah, actually, <laughs> yeah, we're going to do Batman Rampage. Yeah. Uh, so look forward to that. And uh, yeah, that's where I will wrap the episode this week. Uh, this weekend, we should mention, uh, actually, in about... We're recording this on Friday the 13th, which is appropriate, because at 3 a.m., I get, I know that it's technically not Friday the 13th anymore, but I'm staying up, so it still is. Uh, fucking, they're gonna let Rico Verhoeven straight kill a man on, uh, Fight Pass, if you want to watch that. Fucking poor Bigfoot Silva is going to get deaded. Oh, that's right, because he's, like, never done kickboxing. That's that. happening. Well, and it's fucking Rico Verhoeven. Uh, so that's happening at 3 a.m. when we're recording this. Uh, and then tomorrow, I am super hyped for the Ryzen card that's happening, which I know almost no one on apart from uh, King Reyna, who I'm super hyped about. And uh, Sakuraba is grappling Frank Shamrock, like we talked about. Um, and then there's a couple other people. Uh, Kyoji Horiguchi's fighting on it, a couple other guys, but... Um, I, I, rising cards are always fucking hilarious and I will almost promise you we will have some crazy Japanese MMA shit for our picture uh, for next week because you, shit always happens like remember we had that chick with the cup of noodles and the fucking weird oh yeah that was really yeah. confusing it's, all, Even it's with always context. like that yeah I'm sure we'll have King Reno with a giant lollipop or something as our artwork for next week. So we'll go ahead and wrap it here. But as we say every week, if you guys want to hit us up, TSOVpod on Twitter, or you can email us at christhesoundofviolence.com or uh, sovpod at gmail.com and hit us up. Let us know what podcast we should be listening to. Uh, if you guys have any suggestions of ones, if you yourself do a fucking podcast, uh, send us some suggestions and we will definitely check them out. And um, yeah, like we said, hit us up. If you guys could give us a uh, rating on iTunes or uh, leave a fucking review or whatever the fuck terrible ecosystem bullshit they do, that helps us evidently, I guess. I don't know how it works. Um, we'll go ahead and wrap it here since I think my neighbor's trying to climb through the ceiling. Uh, so we'll go ahead and call it. But Chris, is there anything else you wanted to add? No, uh, no, that's it for me. Perfect. Well, then, until next time, everybody, go do something decadent. We out. Oh, wait. Before I say anything else, also, hey, look out for our sweet commentary of Scarecrow's Go- or Scarecrow Gone Wild with Ken Shamrock coming up. So look for that. And until next time, go do something decadent. We out. Peace.